Well, what a privilege it was to have even a short flight with the blades. But looking at their full display now, between you and me, I'm quite relieved not to be up there. But thanks to one special charity, more and more people are getting the chance to enjoy the freedom of the skies. As Pam Rhodes has been finding out. Add that for a great takeoff, but you know that pilot was told that because he has cerebral palsy, he would never be able to fly himself. <laughs> that is until he came here. Damien, you and aeroplanes, it's quite a passion for you. You know, it's been a passion since I was eight years old. Um, I came over for a family wedding and from then on I was just absolutely plain crazy. <laughs> Damien Hunter grew up in South Africa but was prevented from following his dream of becoming a pilot because of his disability. After coming back to the UK, he discovered the charity Airability. And within five minutes of be walking through the reception, I knew where I wanted to be. Airability is a charity that aims to make aviation accessible to people with a wide range of disabilities. 15-year-old Geraint was left brain damaged by a near-fatal asthma attack three years ago. But today, he's able to be a passenger in the cockpit thanks to the AirAbility team and their specialised equipment. It's great to get people up into the air and experiencing life from a different perspective, which is up in the skies. It is a gift flight, and I think to be able to give that to other people is great. But I get such a amount of pleasure from helping other people to take to the skies and fulfil their dreams. Personally, I don't need any adaptations in the aircraft, but many of our flyers do. I passed the medical flight test, and now I am progressing on to complete my private pilot license. <laughs> it's through my faith that I have kept hold of hope. I suppose from the cockpit you do have a bird's eye view of creation, don't you? You know, some of the views from 3,000 foot and up, you just think, wow. Indeed, there is a loving God and he has blessed us with a wonderful world and, and a beautiful place we live in. It's taught me that anything God puts in your heart is there for real. It's not um, going to be taken away. So it has been a gift from God. As our labors increase To added afflictions He offers more mercy To multiply trials He multiplies peace When we are exhausted I store of endurance When our strength is filled And the day is half done When we reach the end Of our earthly resources Father's forgiving is only begun. Our Father's forgiving is only begun.
wonderful hymn of praise and another example of the church's rich musical tradition. But such freedom of expression might not have been possible at all were it not for the actions of one man exactly 500 years ago. Pam Rhodes has been to Cambridge to find out more about one of the most significant events in Christian history, the Reformation. This historic university city has been the birthplace of many ideas that have changed our understanding of the world. But there is one man whose understanding of his own faith changed the shape of the world of the church. And he was just a simple German monk, Martin Luther. To find out more about him, I've come to meet Richard Rex, Professor of Reformation History at Cambridge University. Luther was an Augustinian friar, a member of a religious order, and he taught theology for a living. As he was reading the books of the Bible, particularly the letters of Paul, he was more and more tormented, really, by a sense of not being able to apply this to his own life. And so through several years of study, he gradually reached a new understanding of what it was to be a Christian. Well, the main message that he wanted to get across was that sinners are saved before God by faith and not by the, the good works they do, not by their own efforts. That for him was the core of the Bible and therefore he wanted to make that biblical message directly available to people. It was as a result of that that he translated first the New Testament into German himself and then, after another 10 years or so, the entire Bible. Luther's ambition was for people to understand the Bible for themselves and to have a personal relationship with God. He used the newly invented printing press to spread his interpretation of the Bible and soon churches across Europe were preaching his ideas and conducting services not in Latin but in the languages of the people. By 1519 Luther's books were reaching England and in this very church a few years later Robert Barnes, the prior of the local Augustinian friars, the same order as Luther, preached some of Luther's ideas from the very pulpit in this church. His religious message was very definitely different from that of the medieval Catholic Church and in 1521 he was excommunicated and indeed outlawed by the church. Martin Luther's ideas would eventually lead to the rise of the Protestant movement and open the door to the many denominations we have today. But Luther also made an impact on our musical heritage. It's said that one day in the pulpit, Luther held up the Bible and said, this is the gospel, and then held up the hymn book and said, and this is how we remember it. And certainly he loved hymns. He wrote a lot himself, and he encouraged people to gather together in church to sing songs of praise. Nothing can tear us apart 